much food, <clears throat> but I do know that there's food on its way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. What we're doing today is I want to introduce everybody to you, but before I do that, I want to mention the fact that uh, Bruce and I talked a week, maybe two weeks ago, and he was asking me whether or not we could get the chief of police here. And so I did call the chief of police and invited him to come. And he said he'd love to come in and talk to you. However, because there's a candidate who's running for office, he does not want to give the impression that he supported any candidate. So for that reason, he declined. But he said, however, within the next month or so, schedule another meeting, and I'll be delighted to come and talk to the group about issues that's going on in this district. Uh, particularly, I think about a month or so ago, there was a killing in Clinton Park. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, three days ago. Three ago? Yeah, three weeks ago. Uh, and he said he would talk, he wants to talk about that. He would talk about the homelessness in terms of what the police uh, can do about it. So he's ready to come and talk to you. It's just that he, he thinks it's best for him not to come and talk to you. So, what I will be doing is, I'm going to send out another notice. Once we confirm a date with him, I'm going to send out a notice and uh, let him all know when he will be here and, and uh, you, you'll be ready to discuss anything you want to discuss with him. Uh, but today, <clears throat> I don't live in District 2, but I've been around District 2. How long have I been working with Lynn now? Maybe about five years? Yeah, about five years. So I've been around the community a lot. I've gone to a lot of events in this community, uh, not only here, but also in Chinatown. And what I got out of this area and in Chinatown, that people are dissatisfied with their council. So uh, then I found out that we had other people running for that, for that position. And so I talked to men, I talked to others, and so we said, well, why don't we invite one of the candidates that, uh, even though I think the filing date is July, is it? July, yes. August or something like that? July, it opens in July 18th. And yeah. it ends, I think, August 17th. Or 16th. Yeah. So even though uh, the filing is not done, has not taken place, but I talked to Derek and I said, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to uh, some of the people in the Vietnamese community so that you can get to know who he is, what he's about, and, uh, and then open it up for questions from you. And I see somebody wrote a little sign that said, Little Saigon, Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> so he may be addressing that issue, it depends on what, what you want to ask. So, what I'd like to do instead of wasting a lot of your time and my time, is to introduce you to Terry Oh, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, that's not like formal. I feel like I just want to sit in the chair and kind of have like a round table. Yeah, that's what you want to do. First, first of all, I've been here before. I met with uh, this young man about, I don't know, six months ago, four months ago, five months ago. Uh, and uh, at that time, I was actually a mayoral candidate. Uh, and I've since suspended, I'm in the process of suspending that campaign and transitioning over to District 2. I am a current resident of District 2. Um, and a little bit about me, I'm born and raised in Oakland. I'll take a excuse my hat. I, uh, I've been unloading chicken in the refrigerator all day, so. Uh, I'm, a, I'm born and raised in Oakland. Um, a third generation open there. There's five generations of my family here today. My grandmother was 98 years old. Uh, we just celebrated her birthday in April. Um, I was born and raised in West Oakland um, in the Acorn Housing Projects. Raised by a single mother that worked three jobs to put me uh, through Bishop Dowd and Fisk University at HBCU in Nashville, Tennessee. I actually went to elementary school in District 2 over to Lincoln, um, fourth through sixth grade. And uh, just, you know, just being a native Oaklander, uh, I'm also not a career politician. I'm a career business person. I've uh, owned a business here in Oakland since 1989. Uh, I founded the Home of Chicken and Waffles down in Jack London um, in 2003. <clears throat> and uh, 2004, we opened. I'm proud to say next Tuesday will be our 18th year anniversary. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, 18 years. I'm like, oh. <laughs> These past two, I think, have been the roughest, but, uh, but we're having a tough. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's some challenges. Uh, what drew me, I think, uh, one, I didn't realize that I had led to District 2 when I moved here. Um, I 
was glad I was still in the district court. But what drew me to just the whole political arena was the conditions of the city. Probably the same things that you know you all are concerned about. Uh, the unsheltered population was very concerned when we drive around the city, uh, you know, with a median household, you know, price of a home was above six hundred thousand, and then we have encampments all over the city. That was problematic for me. The other thing was just the lack of opportunity uh, for people from communities that I come from, uh, and then most importantly. Uh, you know, just the, the litter and the, the, the illegal dumping that I, you know, have seen in just different pockets of the city. And so I start challenging and asking our current leaders, uh, you know, I don't understand what's going on. Why do we have these kind of issues? And why are we not doing anything about it? And so, you know, to make a long story short, I said, instead of complaining about it, I decided to do something about it. So I ran for office. My first run was 2020 um, in COVID. I ran for the NRC. Um, and lost by about like a little, little under 3,000 votes. Um, it was the first time I'd ever ran for office. Um, and then I entered, you know, the mayoral race. And uh, now I'm switching over to District 2. So I'm switching because it's not about for me in office or being a mayor or even being a council person. It's really about making a difference and engaging the community. And one thing as being a person that's run a business in the city for 18 years, I've just noticed lately that you know, our current leadership has not been as engaged as I would like to see. I feel that you know, for me being an elected official, you're elected by people. And our responsibility in our job is to listen to people first and foremost. Uh, and take your concerns back to City Hall and try to create policies that address those and make uh, our city better. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, I really want to make a difference, you know, period. I have a career, I, I'm very happy with my career, uh, you know, being a restaurateur, providing jobs. Uh, and I think that's, you know, my biggest platform. What I want to run on is job development. I've seen what jobs have done for my staff and people I've hired over the past 30 years. The majority of my staff has been formerly incarcerated um, individuals, and I've watched them go on, on to you know, have careers and leave me and open businesses and buy homes, and that transformation in their life has been very fulfilling for me personally. And so I hope to do that here in uh, this district. And uh, you know, mainly why I'm here tonight, on one, you know, I was invited and I had to get out here and start meeting everybody in this district. And two, I just want to hear, you know, what are the concerns for the community? Um, you know, I, I know that they're probably similar to every concern in every other district. I mean, you have a, I know we spoke, you have a, you know, <laughs> a large encampment right down the street, which isn't really, you know, healthy for business. Um, and I know that there's a business tax that's on the table, um, a, a proposed, you know, business tax increase and um, although I feel that you know corporations and everybody should pay a fair share I just don't know about now's the right time to do it. I'm personally pro-business and feel that we need to figure out how to bring more business into the city that can provide more jobs, more development, especially housing. Uh, but what I don't want to do is sit up here and talk, talk, talk. I really want to listen and uh, I won't say that I have the answers to all questions but what I don't know I will go and research and come back to you. No, what's your name? Lynn. Lynn. Yes. And so, what do you what do, you do Lynn? Oh, I'm a business engagement specialist for the Unity Council, a nonprofit here. Yes, Unity Council, right? Yeah. I, 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 um, so, I'm currently the chair of the Oakland, Oakland Workforce Development Board. And we met with Unity Council. Yes, so she's my boss. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we met, um, I know Chris well. Did you meet Tiffany? I met with, oh, the young, the, the, um, Ed, Ed Warren. Um, Short guy? Edward. Edward, yeah. We oh, met with Ed. Yeah, we met with Ed and we met with uh, Chris. Okay. So, you know, so what we're doing, um, even with the workforce development, I mean, I've been on the board for about five, six years, and I'm currently in, uh, just became the chair last October. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that always was confusing to me, honestly, was that we have all these board members, but no one really knows or really knows the you know, the CBOs. They don't, you know, they, they hear during the meetings, but they're not familiar, they haven't visited. So we wanted to be more engaging and uh, definitely go out and meet and see the work. Um, uh, 
and so that's what we're, we're, we're implementing. Sophia, the new ED uh, of the Workforce Board, I mean, she's very, uh, she's very engaged in the community. And, you know, Sophia was at Community Council for years. You know, prior, she was the CEO, I think, eight years ago. Um, and then she went to Planned Parenthood, and then I think somewhere else, and now she's at ED at uh, um, no, not Gilda. Sophia. I know Gilda. I know Gilda, but Sophia was. Yeah, she was. She was there uh, as well. So, but yeah, they do great work in the unity council. Very, very good work. So, and I've hired a lot of people over the years, and I think, you know, for me being one of the first small business uh, appointees to the workforce board, I'm very familiar with most of the CBOs because I've hired them. You know, most of them. So. Nice. And what do you do there? Um, business, business, engagement specialist. So oh, okay. we, have, uh, we support, uh, we provide 24 sessions to small business. Okay. In the city of Auckland, and now we're expanding to the mobile area. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, and how about yourself? Jim, Jim Wynn. Mm -hmm. I also work with Unity Council as a business advisor. Okay. Um, I live in Santa Clara. I used to live in Santa Clara, but I live in Santa Clara now. And uh, I've been in the UE for very, very long time since the uh, say mid 1980s. Okay. And I will tell you, just want to share this perspective that when we Vietnamese talk about Vietnamese in Oakland, we are afraid of Vietnamese in Oakland because they are the toughest. Uh, you know, we're from San Jose or San Francisco or other part, but when you say Vietnamese in Oakland, you know that's the toughest crowd. And I will tell you that this past year, when I talk to my fellow Oaklanders, Vietnamese one, I can sense fear in the in their voice. Mm -hmm. You know that these are what I consider tough people. Uh, they are now living in fear. Mm -hmm. They're living. You know, they, this is the only earth they've been through. Many many things. Okay, from escaping to Vietnam to surviving open in the eighties and prospering. You know, but and now yeah, and now, and now, and now, and now it's a different story. Yeah. They still have the issue. They still have the business, but they're talking about personal safety now. They're talking about, we're worried about closing their business early. They talk about exiting, exiting Oakland. And that to me is very unusual because these people, they don't leave Oakland. And when the people who have yeah, committed their lives to Oakland, saying that they don't leave Oakland, mm -hmm. leave the business, sell the business, go back to Vietnam, I think that's bad for Oakland. Because these are stayers, they, they, they're not quitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think something is fundamentally wrong. And that, you know, we need to, Listen to their voices and, and see what's going on and why you know why it's happening now. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's fundamentally wrong is I think I don't know. Do you, bro? Do you know what the last police count was? I mean, I know that we're we're close to like like down. That what class just graduated, but I think we're somewhere around like six fifty two. Six forty eight. Six hundred. Close to six oh seven. Exactly. Six oh seven. That's that's a problem for a city of four hundred and thirty thousand. I mean we should have right now for the short. Yeah. Now we should have about nine hundred officers in the city. Where we need to have officers that are, you know, not just sitting in patrol cars, but actually canvassing and walking the streets. Yeah. When I uh, went to high school in San Jose I remember talking to the owner of these sandwiches. Mm -hmm. He sold like a patriarch. And I remember at the time I was in high school that they were telling me that at night they had to sleep in their store. With, with gun to protect them, you know, from gangs and stuff like that, right. breaking into their uh, little sandwich shop. So I was talking to Tim here. He's been here since 1984, and he's telling me the story that these sandwiches, Patriarch told me in 1985, mm -hmm. that he hasn't been home for like, you know, this past two years, for like a year. He sleeps in this store with a gun to protect his door. That's crazy, man. That doesn't yeah. happen. I mean, this you know, we pay, we pay that business taxes, we pay taxes, you want service for it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a business advisor, I, I have my ears open, and I, I hear this, and, you know, they were kind of helpless, right? I talked to my colleagues at Unity Council, hey, let's call together a meeting, let's organize something, let's, let's get our voice heard. But I, I'm, I'm sure this is not isolated, like, just let's sign on, this is all over the city. It's all over the city. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm downtown. And I was just sharing with Marilyn, Marilyn that uh, Mother's Day morning, you know, our whole building was woke up by gunshots and police. I mean, it's just really, it's gotten out of hand. And uh, I, I spoke to Nancy O'Malley of uh, mothers who lost their kids to violent crimes, young, young youngsters. And uh, 
you know, we talked and she said, you know, it's, the, it's a couple of judges that are also still releasing, even though they've changed the policy. Uh, but it's a couple of judges that are still releasing. And so well, we need to get together with those judges and right and put pressure because when people commit crime, they should not just be released for 48 hours. Because all you're going to do is just recommit and keep going. And crime just it goes on. It just doesn't make any sense. So, and I'm sorry, what did you do? Oh, uh, ran away at night. I am a business owner in Fruitvale for many years, um, property owner, and uh, I've been helping uh, Lynn Drew with um, her um, some hot fat and her real estate that she owns. Okay. And I was just sharing earlier. And by the way, uh, I've, I've only known Jimmy for a short time, but uh, absolute respect for everything he's been uh, through and done and, and what he's achieved, because he's just a phenomenal guy. And uh, as, as a representative, to come from Santa Clara, you're from, you're, you're from Santa Clara, come here for this meeting. That's the, I just met with him yesterday uh, in the, in the yeah, that's the job. That shows so, commitment. And, and you yeah. have a nice problem point out that uh, that's a great respect. I've, I've been through uh, hundreds of meetings um, in the Fruitvale and, and you know representing business and, and listening to politicians and hearing the same old the same old stance, the same mm -hmm. old position. And I've told Lynn um, who you know she believes that the oh the police will you know we need to call on more police and you know I, I get frustrated with the police because I, I look at the payroll of the police and if anybody's ever looked at the payroll <laughs> I mean, I've seen police on overtime being paid over $500,000 a year. And as a small business owner, you know that that is an absolute outrageous amount of money. And then I even hear from her when she complains to the police, and they say, oh, there's not enough money for us to patrol your neighborhood. And I sit there and I think, how do you connect the dots on that? How do you, how, how does somebody not challenge that issue? That, there's policemen out there that are lieutenants. These are not top brass. These are second, third level guys that are getting over $500,000 a year. I actually had to show her the list because she said, it. <laughs> it was staggering. Oh, them, yes. It was staggering. So when we say it needs to be 900 police, but when the police look at that, they're saying, yeah, that means 300 more officers, and that means we're going to be spending how much more money on police? Holy smoke, well, that's, that's my overtime money, right? So there's, there must be some sort of inside situation where they're trying to keep that number tampered down so that they can get the overtime because they're getting that $500,000. And then they get the pension and they get, it's all tied to that. And it's, it's a horrible system. It needs to change. And the only way I see change happening is by small business getting together and unifying and stop fighting amongst themselves and unifying and being able to hold accountability from the city. It's just, it's, it's just, I've heard it too much. I've heard the narrative for years, I mean, right. decades, and I've just said, it's the same narrative. It needs to start from a whole different fundamental change. It has to start from this kind of a group and other groups bonding together and just saying enough is enough. Exactly. But there can't be fights. You can't, a lot of them tend to get into fights and arguments about, you know, who's, who's part of what group and everything, but it's really, it's, it's you know, it, it's very, they become victims because there's no unification, there's no unity amongst the small business. I think that just overall, like, you know, so I'm an outsider, like, I'm not from government. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a part of the Workforce Development Board, you know, there's a lot of misuse of funds. There's also no accountability um, for when you award grants and these funds to different organizations. There's really no, you know, statistical, the right information that's provided. You know, even to our organs, you know, to our, our body, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, just what are the matrix, right? There's the old matrix, which are, you know, as you know, general and, you know, but they're not very, very specific. And it, it is very frustrating. And I think that it's going to take an overhaul of the system, which is going to take time. So, hi, how are you? Good. Hello. I'm Derek Johnson. How are you? The ladies just walked in. How are you doing? Good, good. Good, good, good. What's your, what's your name? Danny. 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 Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. okay. All right. And how about yourself, sir? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, you know, I, I totally agree with the substations. Uh, about three years ago, I made a recommendation to the chief of the fire department. And I said there are 29, I think there's 29 fire stations in the city. Right? So why couldn't there be two or three police officers in every fire station? That puts them very close to the community. Exactly. And uh, the response that I got, well, we don't know if we can make that work logistically. And I said, but well, you should at least try. Absolutely nothing happened. Uh, and I'm going to make that same proposal to the chief and let him know that you want people in the district. Because as yeah. Ruth said, if they see the presence of the police, yeah. it helps to deter crime. And if the police is right there near a fire station or at a fire station, something happens, they can get there like that. They don't have to come from 73rd Avenue far from downtown when it's the rest of the city that's having problems. Exactly. So, and the other thing is, too, a lot of that is just excuses. I mean, we, we as citizens, and I'm just like you, yeah. but I'm a citizen like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of listening to the excuses. I mean, something has to be done. There has to be a resolution. There has to be, you have to at least make an attempt to try. Yeah. Right? We can't, you know, uh, a lady was killed in Acorn last night. A body was found up on Grizzly Peak the night before. I mean, every day, and those things were publicized, but every day, you know, there's a shooting or a killing, you know? I mean, it's, it's absolutely absurd. You know, and as far as safety goes, you know, my business, I mean, we're known, most of our business was late night dining. We used to stay open till midnight during the week at 4 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. We stayed, we closed at 10. It's just, you know, no one feels safe, and it's really hard, you know, people don't come out to dining late. I mean, it's just, you know, the whole system needs an overall. And the only way to make that overall is you got to work with individuals like yourselves that are concerned about the community. It's not going to take, uh, maybe that food you've been waiting for. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's not really about, you know, yes, city officials should be engaged. Yes, you have to help them accountable. But they, you know, but they also should come to partner with you to make something happen. You know, and, and without doing that, you know, what, what is the purpose of running for office? I mean, I'm running to be really a public servant to make the city a better place. We've probably got the zero bill eliminated, finally. So now we can start prosecuting. No, no but, so I've had a talk with Nancy O'Malley. I need to get the name of two judges, but we, we need to really reach out. There's two judges that are still releasing me. It should be because we had a meeting on Friday, and she's, her and Libby both told, told me that that's just gone. Well, they're yeah. not prosecuting. Yeah, they, 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 they're, they're prosecuting, but if you talk one on one, I talked one on one with, well, not this, so, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before that, I was with Nancy at an event. And she said part of the problem is there's still a couple of judges that are just still releasing. But we all want to know on well, Tuesday of last week, mm -hmm. that's time. Okay. So, that's time. Okay. so, but the problem we have right now is turmoil at the DA right now because of yeah. the DA race. Yeah. So you get in house fightings, and the third person that running for the DA seat is very dangerous for the same person. Just like Joseph O'Gain, uh, no prosecution. Who do you like for DA? I have, I'm gonna meet you right now, because I know both of the, uh, the people inside the office. I know Jim, I know Terry, Terry. personally. Yeah. If I have a choice to pick, I would pick Terry. Uh, but the money would come from Jimmy's side, because Jimmy got a big sponsor, big business sponsor, sponsor. So, we don't know yet, we wait for the election day. Then I make a decision. <laughs> That's not uh, everything else. The main thing right now that I want everybody to understand this is a very, very important, very important election year. Yeah. Do or die. Now we have another candidate just in row, I think, uh, Ignacio. Yes. 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 Again. Yes. Okay. So, I don't know. All I know is that the citizen of Oakland right now is suffering for the last three, four years. I've been suffering for a decade. I was about to say a little longer than that, but <laughs> you know, but it has gotten bad. Lately, I mean, it's gotten very bad. When I put my vest away, I put my shield and my gun away for what, 14, 15 years ago, I said I would never put my vest back on again. Those days are gone. Yeah. I'm always double packed. 
Why? Because sometimes my neighborhood. You don't feel safe. And sometimes uh, a senior citizen, hey, Bruce, I just got robbed and got beat. What I do, I check my car, see what happened to them, and make sure they're safe, and make sure they're not retaliation. Right. Because we can't get officers on time. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of the problem is, too, people don't feel confident that even officers going to show up. So a lot of times people don't even call. We lose about three to five officers every month. Yeah, they go into other jurisdictions. Uh, so we're, we're spending the money, like you said, to train them. Don't mean to cut you off. <laughs> we're spending the money to train them, and they're leaving to go somewhere else. So it's tough. And, and I don't blame the officers for leaving because they can't do the job. Yeah. Personally, I've seen it. A uh, guy got a psych for running red light. So officer written up for federal violation. He filed a complaint with the internal affair. So what happened after that? The officer had to go inside. But until the investigation is over. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a slap in the face. I did my job and I got punished for it. You know, but other cities not. Other, the other city would do investigation first. Yes. And see if legit or not before they call an officer in and suspend an officer. No, see the vote on different. Mm -hmm. This is an officer first, then do investigation. It's opposite. Have, have you met Michelle Phillips? She's the new inspector general for the city of Oakland, the first time we've ever had one. You should, I, I know her well, you should, mm -hmm. I'm going to connect you with her, you should invite her to a, mm -hmm. to a meeting. She's, she's, she's uh, I think she's going to do very, very good work. Is she the one appointed by Judge Henderson? No. No. The watch over? No. no. What, is, what is that role that she plays? So she's like the liaison between the community, the police department, and administration. So she's kind of, she doesn't answer to the lead. Really? So what is the position I don't know? I mean, I never heard of it. I don't know. Yeah, it's the first time the city of Oakland's had one. She's the very yeah, first one. Why? So she investigates misconduct in the police department. She investigates um, why crimes aren't being solved. She comes out to community and like these type of events and answers questions and what do you want to hear and see or what do you want to see, see out of you know policing and safety and concerns and takes them back and then she also uh, uh, manages between the administration and the police. I think the best thing to do is let me know when you're having meetings. Probably not when the chief is coming, but invite her. She's very, she's always in community. Mm -hmm. Can I have her contact? Yes, please? I have her contact. I'll give it to Abigail my, myself. Yes. Yeah, I just see too many, uh, you know, these meetings, politicians will pull together a meeting and they'll want to show that they're part of the community. There'll be 15 officers lining up and they'll all show up and show off their uniforms and everything. But she's not a politician. I know, but it's just like, I've just seen too many of these uh, meetings where they, the police will all line up and all dutifully get up there in front and show everybody that they're there, but they just, they're just they just not showing up at the crime. I love the idea of the fire department. I think yeah, that's exactly. actually is a very good idea. That's an absolute genius. I think, I think that's just, uh, that makes all the sense in the world. And yeah, because then you don't, you're you not spending any more money. You're already yeah. allocating the money. You spend a lot on firemen as well. Right. They're the best paid firemen in the West, West in the United States. Right. Needs to happen. That's a great idea. Right, I'll definitely get your information. Let me see. I think some other people. Hi, how are you? This is Lynn. Oh, hi, Lynn. Yeah. Derek, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hi, how are you? Uh, good. This good, is good. In, in a restaurant. Which is restaurant? King Restaurant in uh, International in Second. That? Okay. okay. Is that that's where this is? The food's mm -hmm. from? Okay, well, I can't. It smells good. Yeah. <laughs> So let me ask you questions. What yes. what made you think you would change things in open? What made you think you can override the judge and override the the laziness of a city council? Well how you can override I, I, I don't only think, one person. Well that's what I was about to answer. Yeah. One person can't do anything, but what I am gonna do is one, I'm not lazy. Mm -hmm. And two, I will work with the community. I think if you have people that are engaged with community numbers, mm -hmm. like the Warriors strength in numbers, if you have community and people, then you can make change. You have to really get involved in community, community organizations, make people understand, just like in our community, in the black community, most of them don't even know what the rules committee is. Most of them, they complain, but no one comes and shows up to city council. And, 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 and 
their voices unheard. But if you gather and, and, and organize people, you can definitely make some change happen. It might not happen overnight, but it will change. The only reason why I'm doing this is I'm sick and tired of the conditions of the city. It's, it doesn't make sense to ride around and look at, you have a business right here and a block away. You know, you have all this, you know, right down the street from you taking place. You know, prostitution, um, drug deals. I mean, it, you know, same thing with my, my, my business. I mean, every single day, I, somebody's sleeping out in front of our door, smoking crack or meth or whatever it is, and I have to deal with it on a daily basis. I don't even bother to call the police. You know, so it, it's going to take galvanizing and really youth and, and organizing the community to really make a, a change and being very transparent on what is going on down the city hall, because something is happening, just like this gentleman said. You have officers making high six figures, something's wrong, right? What is that something, and why is it not being addressed? I'm not inside, so I don't know, but once I get inside, I definitely let to find out. Right now at the present time, about 10 officers ask for going OT, only one respond, and I say no. I'm sorry, you said what? Ten officers? Ten officers required OT, OT, mm -hmm. full time. Nine would respond no. I would just do my hours and go home. Mm -hmm. I just manage for it. No one will go with time right now. No one. I know it because I talk to those guys every day. We group chat every day. Hey, you guys think going on this event going on? Can you come? No, I can't. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to talk to the young kid coming up right now, I do my time out and I go home. No one will go with time. No one to feel safe and open. Not even an officer feels safe and open. It's a bad time. It's <coughs> very bad. Officer get fired for no reason. You, 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 you hired three different organizations to investigation and shooting. All three fines justified. But the commissioner, actually the chief, was forced or was how do you call it? Intimidated. He said the officer is guilty. When all three organizations that see actually hired throwing out the investigation, I was found justified. So why would the officer be here for? It's not worth it. They want to go into the family just like we do. Right. Mm -hmm. it, something has to change. Libby came to me Friday at my table. She said, Bruce, I'm ashamed to even come and talk to you. I failed you. I told Libby, you didn't fail me, Libby. You failed the city of Oakland. Mm -hmm. You failed the citizen of Oakland. You didn't fail me. You failed those kids on the street. You failed the kids that sleep in the bed and get shot. You failed those kids, not me. And she said, I know, I know. But nothing done about it. I agree with everything you said. What, what, who do you feel is uh, your biggest competition for yourself? Like, how do you assess the race and yourself getting into office? Well, right now, what I know of is just uh, uh, Nikki and myself uh, running. I don't know of any other candidate. Uh, and now, that doesn't mean that someone else uh, might get in. So, I, I don't know if it's just. Uh, We're trying to answer by July. Mid July. Yeah. That's when, that's the, the, filing, the filing date yeah. opens July 18th. Yeah. And August, that's when. In, in August, is, I think it's the 16th, is the close. 15th. 18, yeah. 18. 18? Yeah. Okay, so then August the 18th, it, it closes. It's a 30 day filing period. Um, so I'm not, you know, I, I don't know who else, so I'll yeah. get on the right there is, there is another guy who's thinking about running. That's Harold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I talked to Harold. I don't yeah. know what he's thinking about. Uh, so then, you know, so right now, as I, as, as I know right now, it's just the incumbent in myself. Mm. Um, and I've, I've talked to quite a few people. I haven't really geared up. I mean, this is actually my first time coming to talk to a group in the district because I still have some things that I have to finish. I just found out that the building, I mean, now I'm in District 2, but they're redistricting. And it won't be in District 2, so I'm moving, I have to close down mm -hmm. uh, my committee for the mayoral race because there's new laws, you can't have two races open for the same term at the same time, so I'm, I'm working to close that out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have to get a new consultant. So I've got the new consultant, the move thing is pretty much 
the, just closing out the mayoral campaign and I'll open up a new committee. Uh, and I'll do the work. And I'll go knock on doors, come to, you know, listen to people. And, you know, and, and I don't, it, you know, I don't, I don't claim to, to know everything. So when people ask me, what am I going to do? It's really not about me. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Oakland. I'm just putting myself out there because at the end of the day, I think I have great people skills. I definitely know how to deal with every level. And this, this district is very diverse from Crocker Island down to here. I mean, it's, you know, it's very diverse. And so um, one good thing that I've been doing, I've been holding community engagement meetings. We have one, uh, I'll invite you to come if you like, on the, uh, the 18th, next Wednesday. That's the 18th, right? yeah, the 18th, next Wednesday. So we go to community engagement uh, meetings. Uh, from my prior race, I was asked to join several organizations. And those organizations I participate in, uh, and most of those most of the individuals within those organizations, you know, live up in the hills, and they're concerned about safety and violence, and they're trying to come up with ways to solve those issues. But they're not connected, nor do they know anyone in the areas that all this violence is taking place. So I'm very familiar with a lot of individuals and where this violence is taking place. So we had this will be our third meeting, and so I've kind of uh, brought the communities together. And we've been changing, exchanging the dialogue, and really trying to come up with some type of engagement and plan to see what can community members do and what can we put into place, and then get the resources and help from the city to try to curb this violence because it's really an epidemic. This is a state of emergency out here. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. So we have a, a meeting next Wednesday at 6 30. I'll send you information, and all of you all are uh, definitely welcome to, to attend us. It's, uh, it's, it's not closed, it's open. The restaurant is actually closed to the general public on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for you students to go only. So it would just be our group in there. Mm -hmm. You have a question? I, uh, I have a question. Yeah. I, 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 I've been the owner myself. My name is Thin. I, I, I own, I own, I own a two, a two, a, a two business on East Twan Twan. I'm, I'm, I'm actually the type of person who would go around, you see, any, any car. Abandoned, I will report it, get it to the police or city. Uh, before I call, they would tow, tow, tow away, you know, within a couple of days, a few days. But now, it seems like they're ignoring that. And it, it takes a bit of effort to, uh, to tow that junk away to make the city look nice. You no? Know? One, 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 the homeless start, start, start moving to the live in the abandoned car and that's it. The city won't, won't even touch it. Right. And it's been some case that have been there for two years. And um, what I want is somebody have to change something, do something. One, one a business person call, that means they have to take action. Yeah, I, I just don't want that piece to be there month and month, year after year, you know, and the, the, the customer from far away come to your business and see, Right. It's, it's so bad, you know. I, I need you no know, just like here. Car have no no license plate, no engine been there for forever. Just enforce the law. That, 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 that what we need. We need people. That we, we, we need. have a problem with enforcement yeah. in the city. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the cabinet policies, a whole lot that's not being enforced. Yeah. 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 And I hear with the abandoned. It's just you mean you made a very good point with the abandoned uh, vehicles uh, when someone claims that as their residence. Uh, they're, 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 and that's yeah. the court causing the problem. Yeah, they're, when they claim it as their they're residence, they, you, can't, the you can't tell them. Did the person say they lived there? Yeah, you, you, you can't. You but can't tell but so that's a policy. They lay on on the road, okay. not not on, on a private or anything. They lay on, no, on the public no, street. But still, yeah. If, yeah. even if it's parked right here, and I say I live there, they won't tell them. So that's something that, you know, that's where, you know, someone yeah. like myself getting into the seat have, as have legislation, you have to, you have to work on the trial change. You really call stolen. Yeah. If you guys say sleep there, or that's the sound, they won't put, they won't touch it. Mm. So that's why you see so many abandoned cars. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It, it makes it And even if the bad. tow company shows, just say they show up, if the person comes over and say, that's my residence, then they, they, they can't tow it. That's that what made the city look bad. Yes. Yes. I 100% I, I agree. Mm -hmm. 
but not in San Leandro or not in. Oh Rome. yeah, so that's the thing. Just real quickly, like, that's, that's the, you 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 I'm mentioned Oakland. something very very important. You know, you look at Oakland, right? And just what you just said, in San Leandro, in Alameda, Castro Valley, you don't see any of that. No, no. Yeah. Only Oakland and Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, yeah. question. I, I need to change. You're not going to explain. Oh, okay. Now you can say it. I'm so angry too. I don't have a question, but I think uh, Bruce uh, asked and uh, Renzo asked you a lot, right? But I have a little question for you. I've been here for a long time, right? When mm -hmm. I call the police in the morning, 10 o'clock, and they feel answer me like 3 o'clock in the morning. But so many times like that. But yeah. the main is 911, the number one. And I want to know when you will be the ticket to the council member you present to us the city and what you think to help the Asian community, number one. Because uh, I think the the people they they thought we Asian not power, nothing when you call don't answer, there's there's no service. And always ask food. So help us. But so many things I don't want to bother. But I want to know when do we go to be the council city uh, district too? What what you think to happen? Uh, well, I didn't answer that question. So I only asked something. Well, she's saying right there, it's good and it's bad. It's good. Yeah, she did call in. There's records she called in before she filed a complaint for the internal affair. It's bad about it because bodies. You got one person, separate fire, family. So he's only going to be one person who's part of the city council if you win. But you have five of the city council that seven. Seven of the city council that very liberal. Uh, that don't really enforce the law. And that's going to be hard. Because remember, every time we go to a vote, majority rule. And that's the problem. Unless someone willing to take a risk, take a chance, in contempt, then maybe you can change or she can change. Yeah, you gotta take a big, a big chance. Well, I'm very much into enforcement. Uh, and just not only for the Asian community, but the same thing in the black community. It's, it's a problem. You call, no one comes, right? Uh, and enforcement is an issue all the way around in the city. And if we have these laws, we have to enforce them, period. And what happens is, you know, from my experience, there's a small group that, that are not affected by any of these issues that come to city council, raise a lot of noise, and then the council just backs down. Well, I, I don't, I'm not gonna back down because I understand what's going on in the streets. I understand how business is affected, you know, because I'm affected, right? And so you have, to, you have to stand up. You know, I'm not really interested in being a career politician. It's okay with your phone, I get it. You own a business, it's good your phone rings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, and I've never been interested really in politics, to be honest. I just got fed up with the condition of the city that I was born and raised in. You know, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't raised in the Oakland that you see encampments all over the city. You know, people just in broad daylight. You know, what woke me up was when I was walking around the lake, as I do often, and saw someone break into a car, and I felt helpless, because normally I would have reacted and said something to him, but I had to stop and was like, hold on. If I say something, I might get shot. You know, and, and, and it was just me. And I finished walking around the lake, and then I saw the guy come to his car. I think I told you that. I saw the guy come into his, he was, he was like sitting on the lawn, and he started running towards his car. I stopped him, I'm like, it's not even worth it, it's just a window. He was like, I just got a grand. I said, I know, but it's not worth it. So it makes you feel helpless. I'm tired of feeling helpless. And so the only way to do something about it is to get inside and find out why is this system the way it is, and what do we need to do to fix it? Period. We have a beautiful city, but a shitty, shitty, shitty government. And it's frustrating. Well, we can change that, because we put people in government. Yeah, let me, let me point out, uh, Nikki Boss is the current councilwoman, right? The president, yes. And I, I spent weeks trying to gain her attention and then I got on a phone call with a local businesswoman who's been here for many, many, many years. And Nikki basically started the meeting and told her, you know, this is a woman, I, I've been in Oakland you know, 
25 plus years. She's been in Oakland 25 plus years, and we were there to talk to our council person. And she literally said, I've only got 30 minutes for this phone call. I'm sorry, I, I've only got 30 minutes, and we'll just try to get done what we can get done. And I kind of had to sit there and just, it just infuriated me at the very beginning of the call. It took me three weeks to get the phone call, just to get it scheduled, right? And I was just so upset because the disrespect to the woman who I was representing, working with, she she was sitting there frustrated because she wanted to voice her upset and voice her problem. She you know literally got cut off at the knees by the woman who's supposed to be listening to us. So I think it's a very easy race to win. Not to say that your job is easy. I'm just saying that no, no, and I it's, think it's, 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 it's a person who's not doing her job and she needs to wake up to what's reality about her district. Well, I think we all you know I'm I'm you know. I'm very blunt and straightforward. You know, and I, as humans, we all make mistakes. You know, Merlin sent me a text, thank you, about today, and my response was, you know, I have a hard stop at 6.30, and then I was like, wait a minute, I want to talk to people in the community, and I'm trying to run for office. So I was like, no, I canceled what I had to do, mm -hmm. you know, because this is important. Mm -hmm. You know, this is very, very important. And if you're gonna put yourself in that position, so I'm not gonna, take on the same characteristics that I can blank yeah. about. If you go in an office, then you should have a tight office. You know, in 48 hours, that's my policy in business. 48 hours, get it done. Or let's have an update on why isn't it done. And that's why I've been in business for 18 years. And I've had that same policy when I get into this seat. In 48 hours, we need to respond. But if we can't respond, send an email. You know, and when you have uh, meetings like this, you need to allocate time to listen to your constituents because that's mm -hmm. how, why you're in office. Why you're in office. Period. Yeah. So I apologize for my uh, text. And I know you were like trying to start the meeting. That's so why I said, no, don't worry about it. You know, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. This is, I'm, I'm here. How are you building your organization to uh, mobilize you know, people to vote for you and tell them about your platform? Have you written anything out? No, uh, because I'm still transitioning. Uh, so, uh, the ethics committee, I have to be a little careful because I still have a committee open. I really, like, I'm here, but I'm, I'm, I really need to be here once the head mm -hmm. committee is actually closed. I've kind of talked to them. That's why I went downtown yesterday, because I keep getting all these different versions of what I can and cannot do, so I just went and sat and talked to the people. So. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like in a little gray area right now. But to answer your question, once I do close that out, I will open up. When, when is that? Um, hopefully by the end of this month. I just had a little bit more to raise. I was at 25,000, now I'm down to like eight, I think. Mm -hmm. I just have to raise 8,000 more to close it out. Um, and then I will open a new committee. And then um, I will set up uh, in the district, you know, point people just about in every neighborhood and just get out there and talk knock on doors, knock on streets, um, uh, talk to organizations, the Vietnamese Chamber, yeah. you know, African American Chamber, the Chinese Chamber, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and, and just talk to groups, neighborhood groups, and you know, just get out there and do work. I like talking to people, um, and I like knocking on doors, so that that would be, that, that's, that's easy for me. You know, the pulse of the, uh, the community here, so uh, get the contacts and, uh, you know, we can help you, but I think we need to formalize what you're doing. And then, yes, and then you're absolutely right. Your yeah, you're absolutely right. right. I have to so change you know, my whole I just, like I said, I just got a consultant, uh, a new consultant with this race. Uh, and so we, we just met last week, so we're, you know, getting that. And I just want to make sure that I, I move. Uh, they haven't certified the new map yet, uh, but no one at the city has been able to tell me <laughs> when they're going to certify the map. And matter of fact, they can't even tell me the streets. I mean, there's a map, but there's really no, on the map, you can have an outline like what the name and the street the numbers lines. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the line. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we all have dealt with the city of Oakland. So, <laughs> I was down there for two hours yesterday just trying to figure out, okay, well, I moved here, I'm still in the district, but I think we worked it out. But yes, I am, I am getting it very for myself. I would say by definitely the first week of June, I'll be, second week of June, I'll be up ready to rock and roll hard. Um, 
but I, I will leave. I would love to get out a, a paper. Yeah, I can pass around if you don't mind putting your name and email and number or whatever contact you feel comfortable. I'll give my number, my cell number to anyone call um, at any time. If I don't answer, just text me. If I don't answer, I'm usually at work. Uh, but you can text me and I'll definitely respond. I have a team, I have a campaign manager in front of me. I still have the same team together. I just wanted a different consultant for this type of race. Uh, so yeah, and I'm, I'm very accessible. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm all open, born and raised inside and out. <laughs> so I definitely want to see uh, uh, prosperity in business. And I love the little Saigon, like, I was, that's, 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 what, 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 what is, a little Saigon. Let's you know, start from first street. We um, uh, uh, from first to 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 four to four to, to fourteen F, and uh, from uh, East Twelve and in in uh, along along East Twelve and, and and in in international. Okay. The district we call uh, Little Saigon. Little Saigon. Okay. Yes. I yes. like that. I was telling yeah. uh, question. Marlon, yeah. you know, having districts in Oakland is is like. We're not the most diverse, one of the most diverse cities in America. So having districts like that it is another way tourism can come here, which helps all of our businesses. So I think a little different. I'm very much a visionary. I, I want to see businesses thrive. You know, when you had the Raiders and the Warriors here, we were packed. Yeah. You know, now that we don't have them here, we can't can't fold, you know, we can't lay down. We gotta figure out what is gonna bring more tourism and more people to our district so that they can spend their money in our businesses, which helps employ people, you know, and, and help our city thrive, right? Yes. And so that, 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 that's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's one great way, you know, find out what is over in Saigon. Uh, There's yeah. nowhere else in America, can yeah. we put it here? Yeah, so people, so people, people, people go to, uh, come to Oakland, if, 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 they, if they crave for food, you know, where, 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 where to go to? You know? <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> yes, and I thought we made good catfish, but I wouldn't even be in the beast catfish, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually yeah. very good. So, yeah, uh, yeah so I, 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 I'm very much, maybe you can, uh, I'm a very big, strong advocate for for uplifting uh, districts yeah. and making sure that they're thriving. I'm, I'm a very strong advocate. For that. Thank you. Maybe he can open an office at the uh, Clinton Park, right? It's closed sure. right now. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy that it hasn't been yeah, rebuilt. Yeah. It's sad. Sitting there, and broken and burnt out, right? Homeless been there forever. Yeah. Open an office at Clinton Park and you'll be a home run in the entire community. You know that park? It's for... Not going to Chinatown, you're not going to be there. You're in between San, you know, San Antonio, Little Saigon, China. I got to get my uh, campaign office together too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, real soon. Sometimes it's sad, you know, that, that nice little park for kids to play. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I walk around, see knee, 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 yes. yeah. it's on the ground wow. and yeah. drag, homeless encampment, and they, they start the, the burn, burning the fire, and the wind blow it and burn the building, the building that too. A, a few times, right? A couple of times. Mm -hmm. Now they put the gate around it, it's sad. Yes, very sad, and uh, they should enforce the law. Night, no, no, nobody should in the pub in pub public park at night time. Huh? Yeah, you know, keep it clean for people to come. Where, where is Shirley G? She's the head of that, right? Uh, Shirley G. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm human, so I'm not perfect, but I definitely, what I don't know, I'll find out, and I will definitely show up. Yeah. You will not have that problem with me at all. Thank you. That I can guarantee you. Yes. Because if not, I already know Bruce is going to come looking for me, and I don't want that. Bruce will retire next year. Yeah. I'm to stay one more year. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure we keep Bruce in Oakland. Yeah, he okay. thinks he's leaving. I'm going to make sure. Watch. We're going to want to turn that around in mindset. Like you said, those people want to leave. I want to make sure they stay. Yeah. We can't, we can't have this. It's a huge exodus. It's been a huge exodus for my community. We can't have people leaving. We need, we need to stay so we can build it up and build it back. I'll tell you something interesting, right? In the mid-90s, I worked with the Mary Jordan mm -hmm. near San Francisco. Mm -hmm. San Francisco and Oakland were competing um, with a 
with Ho Chi Minh City, we call Saigon, Vietnam. They wanted, is this city with either Oakland or San Francisco? No. There's, there was a competition, right? right? But the fact that Oakland was competing with San Francisco tells you that it was a big deal to the right. Vietnamese at the time. Yeah. They came here, they sent a delegation, and you know, they, they, the mayor of Oakland at the time was like, wow, you know, that's it. So, we recently, like last year, you know, I invited some Vietnamese officials to come here. They were telling me, like, straight face, say, we're not going to open. Be scared. Okay? And I said, go to like Bali Mong, go to like all this stuff that we are. No, they said, we're not going to open. And that to me is like pride, okay? That hurts my feeling because, man, you know. Well, after November, you invite them back. They'll have it for nice tour. Well, you have to. You have to. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, they're very serious people. Yes. Who lie, who safety is on the line here. And they're leaving Oakland. They're not going to open. They're leaving Oakland. They're banning Oakland. And you don't want that. No, we don't. No. This little site on here, you know, may not be around because people are not, uh, they, they, they worry about their life. No, you're right, Jay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to send a word. Yes. But I don't think you don't let it. But I didn't pay work. And I just want to find this. Why don't they build the shutters? Don't they have enough shutters here? No. Well, not only do we not have enough, but uh, it's kind of like the Boulder Act. Like, Unless you really have a place to put people and move them off the street. So it's a lot of policies that we have to look at and figure out how to reoffer and rechange so that you know we don't have this problem existing. But we also have to have competent and people that want to lead. The leadership is not really, at least from my perspective, it's not whether you know you're liked or disliked, but are you respected and are you doing the right thing? I mean you have to lean on the county and put pressure because that's where the resources are. And the county should be doing a better job than the city officials in Oakland need to be more aggressive in making sure that they're doing it. We're the largest city in the county. And there's no reason why, like you said, you don't see this in San, you don't see this in San Leandro, you don't see this in Castro Valley. Even in New York. Yeah, right, right, right. You don't, no. But you see it here a lot. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'll give, you know, I have a pad, I'll pass around, and I'll give everyone my number. I'm about to dig in on this food because I'm hungry. Um, and just thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate it. Before, before we dig into the food, because uh, there's lots of food here, so when we get to that point, please eat it all. Um, but the whole purpose for Derek to come here today was for you to get to know who Derek is and what he is about. And the thing that we have to understand is that we don't have right now in our city council. The city council people work for you. You don't work for them. And in many cases, and I've been in open politics for probably about 60 years, and it's very rare that you find city council people who realize that they work for the community, as well as the mayor. The mayor works for you, you don't work for the mayor. So when, the, when city council people come out to the, the, to the district and to the community and have meetings with the communities, that's what you want. You want to be able to get on the phone. I think somebody said they, they were called, the guy here said that he was calling yeah. uh, Nikki's office. Nikki Bass, and she spent 30 minutes with him. Well, the issue that this, this constituent had was probably needed more time than 30 minutes. And so it, 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 it made her feel as if, well, I'm nothing to you. And that's why we have to get city council people, not just in District 2, but in all the districts. We have to get city council people in there who realize they work for you. You are their boss. You pay them. Your taxes pay them. So therefore, they work for you. So it's refreshing when we get from time to time a person who's running for council, even though it's not official yet, who's running for council who can tell you that they work for you and not you work for them. So I knew that Derek had not officially filed to run for this office, but it is, we're at the point now where people need to get to know who he is and what he's about and feel comfortable with him. And not only feel comfortable with him, but be able to go back out into your community and say, look, 
I met this guy, and I know what he's about, and he's a good guy to vote for. When you look at, and I've had a lot of dealings with Mickey Bass, and none of them have been good, none of them. Uh, not only Mickey Bass, other members of the council I've had dealings with, and they totally ignore you because they feel, look, I'm a city council person. Yeah, and you have to look up to me, not me look up to you. And that's the way it should be. You should be not looking up to the council person, the council person should be looking up to you. So keep that in mind, go back into your community, talk about Gary, uh, and then when he files, be sure to get the information that you have for him, the information that he's gonna get from you, and if you want him to come out to a community meeting, call him. If you can't get in touch with you with him, call Lynn. Lynn will call me. I can get in touch with him anytime. Mm -hmm. Well, you better get in touch with me. I can so I can either give you my cell phone, but I was assuming that because I was gonna give everybody send an email. So just send everybody. my email with my cell and everything in it. But you know, my cell is 510-912-3933. I'll make sure you get it, you put it in your here, yeah. give me your contacts, I'll put it in for you. So, do, is there any other questions that we have before we say it again? If not, um, yeah. 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 I might have missed it in the beginning, uh, but what will be your number one strategy when you become uh, a city council to make the city better, if not in the city too? So, my first priority is safety. Uh, I, I'm running on a platform of jobs and job creations. That's where my experience is. For the past 30 years, I've owned a business in Oakland, uh, and I've been providing jobs, especially those that are returning citizens. So I have a really good, a lot of experience, I should say, working with formerly incarcerated individuals um, and turning their lives around. And so but, but development, creating jobs, none of that matters if you don't feel safe as most people in this room feels, and, and I feel that way. So we have to align, I want to align myself with the department and with whoever the mayor is going to be and work with them to make sure that we have a safe city, because that's first and foremost. Um, and then what would be the, the strategy to make the city safe or if not? You know, well, I mean, Merlin had a great idea about the police. I never even thought about putting the police. I mean, that's brilliant. Putting substations inside of the fire departments, but you know, I, I would like to see at least a substation in every precinct, there'd be faster response time, police presence, uh, and just more community policing. I think that, you know, we have officers in patrol cars just sitting down here in the lake. I mean, you're sitting in your patrol car and then they're still selling whatever, <laughs> right, you know, a block or two away from you, or really right in front of your car. So I just feel like more engagement uh, and more engagement from elected officials. I know I will be very engaged in the district. I will show up. Um, you know, I just, I, I just feel that there's definitely a link, that the chain, the link is, is missing between downtown and just our community. And that, that has to come back. I, I grew up in Oakland where I knew the council people. I knew the office of Washington uh, that had walked. And I grew up in Acorn in the projects. So, you know, I, I knew our officer. Uh, and, I, and I, I think that'll slowly but surely make a difference. But with some presence of police, we can curb the violence, but there's no presence, right? And right now, it's like the wild, wild west. People, you know, commit crime, and, you know, they don't feel they're going to get prosecuted. And even though that, you know, the law has been lifted, I, I, I don't know how confident I even feel in that. I mean, you know, it's like we need to really enforce the policies that we have. So, yeah, so safety is, that, that's number one. I mean, there's a lot of other things I want to do. We have, we have unsheltered people in cabinets. But at the end of the day, we, we have to get this crime, this gun, you know, these killings are out of control. And robberies, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, it makes no sense. You know, I might have to tell everyone that has a business or a restaurant, you know. I hire a lot of, you know, like I said, I have a lot of formerly incarcerated, so I've never been robbed because my kitchen probably, <laughs> you know, I have a pretty tough kitchen crew, but, you know, we need to definitely get, uh, get safety, you know, just right. in, in the city. It, it has to get under control. It's ridiculous. So, you know. This is just kind of bad because. No, it's right not kind of bad, it's horrible. Right now, you know, past seven, you barely get any food around this area. 
No, mám ich Before more, more business, they open until sunset, like a sup, 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 uh, sup, uh, supermarket like Lin. They open at eight, until 8 o'clock. No? Right now, all 6 o'clock, they all shut down. My, my business at 4, we close down. 4 o'clock, we out. Yeah. 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 We got to get you over and over. You work enough, we're going to get you back and Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.